Welcome to RVU, an RV insider podcast where I interview industry experts, icons, and influencers. Class is in session for all things RV. I'm your host, Angie Morrell, and today I'm so excited to have Chris Spienert with us from Winnebago. So Chris, thank you so much for, for stepping in today. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Can you tell us what you do at Winnebago? Yeah, so I'm the product manager for uh, the Winnebago Class B products. Okay. Camp- well, that's a big, I mean, I believe, um, let me know if I'm mistaken, but I don't think I am, that, that Winnebago has the biggest market share of Class B vans in the country. We've been competing for it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, tell me what uh, what does your a day look like at Winnebago for you? What day of the week? Every, <laughs> honestly, every day is different. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, what we, what we do in the, the product management department, um, there's a lot of, uh, first up, paying attention to our customers, you know, listening to them, um, you know, at different events and such we go to. Uh, but a lot of the day is applying that, those learnings, um, always looking at, you know, what's the next new product? How can we improve the products we have? Um, and a bit of, you know, how can we support our owners and and uh, through the product side. So give me an idea of, well, first of all, I didn't ask you, what's your background and how did you, how long have you been with Winnebago? Okay, interesting question. Um, I My background by education is actually aerospace engineering. <laughs> so we're gonna fly soon? <laughs> <laughs> we already have. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Hello <true>. home, <laughs> technically it was a class B. <laughs> um, but no, uh, my, let's say my background was was in engineering, and I came to Winnebago in uh, 1994, uh, working up through the ranks of, uh, you know, through design and such. Uh, 94 wasn't a great time to be graduating <laughs> as an aerospace But um, then sometime around 2007, um, I decided to take a little bit of a different tack with the career and moved over to the product side. Okay. And uh, I've been there ever since. I've been there ever since. Kind of worked my way up through uh, a role we call product planner, uh, which is a very nuts and bolts, early stage development Mm -hmm. uh, role for the the product and then into the product manager role. So how big of a team do you lead for the class B product manager? So my team, uh, there's three of us. Okay. Myself and uh, two product planners that uh, split up and... uh, work on our different vans and upcoming vans. And, uh, but overall product management, there's probably about nine okay. of us there now. Okay. So tell me what, um, when you have a new product mm-hmm. that you are thinking about. Mm-hmm. So you come up with the idea for the product, right? And then where do you go from that idea stage. Okay. So the, um, you know, where the idea can come from, a lot of it, it, it comes from a need. So really we come up with the need a first. need first, you know, or a, a want um, in the market. And then we'll, you know, we'll start with the, the brainstorming around, you know, the, the van to, to fill that need. It could be a different layout, you know, with, uh, you know, different type of bed configure, bath configuration, but we'll work through um, fleshing that out and we use what's called a stage gate process. So I work in the, the, the front end of that. Mm-hmm. We get to what we'll call a gate zero. It's like, you know, where you get that from motorhome leadership and it's like, okay, yes, we wanna, we wanna, start, we wanna explore this idea some more. So then we work through the, a gate one to a gate two and that's, um, both in virtual and uh, and physical, uh, creating mock-ups of, of the product um, could be as simple as you know very large wooden box the same size as the RV, and we'll build out all of the furniture and cabinetry inside, you know, so you can actually walk in and you know turn around. And there is an element of that now. It's, of course, it's transitioning over into virtual reality. Right. How how. Um, do you feel like that's going to be the future and much easier to see? Or do you think you still have to build that out and have that physical um, unit to to make sure it really works? Right now, I think there's still a need for the, the actual physical unit. Although, 
the VR keeps getting better mm -hmm. and better and better. <laughs> but, you know, there's still some things that um, it's still hard to see in or experience in VR. Um, but so we'll work through that. Um, you know, at this time, sometime maybe we'll bring in customers or, um, you know, under NDAs to actually, uh, you know, kind of like go through a day in the life inside of it. Right. You know, so we get uh, the feedback, sort of a design sprint that way. And, uh, you know, then, and we'll also be working, of course, with our, uh, our styling studio at the time, you know, so they're coming up with, you know, the, the textures, the fabrics and everything. So the planners and the stylists will work pretty close together. And then we get to, you know, presenting all this into a gate two. And that, that's the point where, um, you know, they hit the go and they start the hard engineering. And, right. You know, that's, that's kind of where we, it's kind of like, yeah, you give the push off and, <laughs> and you let it go. And then we'll come back again, uh, closer to the end of the, uh, end of the process to really take the coaches out and use them and validate them. Uh, that's uh, something that- Make uh, sure everything works as you envisioned it yes. and as you planned. Yeah. And, you know, we'll go through different stages of um, people close to the project, taking them out and using them, eventually then out to people who don't have anything to do with the project. So they're, so they're not tainted by- right. Yes, their ideas, right, so. right. Yeah, because they kind of become your babies, and so then it's a little bit more personal, right? Right. <laughs> right. Kind of get fresh eyes. So what products, so you've been with the company about 27, 28 years? So to I did my 94, math, right? we're in 2023. <laughs> I think it's going to be 30 years next year, so. Oh, that's right. I didn't wow. do my math right. Yeah, that almost 30 years. Yeah. Um, what product um, are you most proud of? Oh, that's a... Great. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, you're looking back through uh, quite a time period there. Um, I have to give a nod to the, the, the V and the rail. Uh, okay. We don't build anymore, but uh, to date, we're the only ones in the U.S. who have built a Class A on a Sprinter chassis. Really? Uh, okay. You know, so that was a, you know, that was a pretty um, innovative, exciting product uh, at the time. You know, and then we get into some of the, the vans that we've worked on um, or that I've you know, had a hand in and I understand it's a big team effort, but you know, the Travato really, really helped bring the, you know, the class B to where it is today right. in the, in the marketplace. And then I'd also worked on our, our Revel product that uh, I'm pretty proud of that one is that really helped, you know, get, it really helped move help move Winnebago with a step into the you know the rugged you know it was a not the normal RV space. That... Well, and I can say I, I would think that you could take a huge compliment. It's also a compliment, and then you've got to hate it at the same time <laughs> that everyone's copied you. Everyone, oh, oh, of course. <laughs> yep, so of course. that's always a good sign that you're doing something right. Yeah. Um, at the same time, I'm sure you hate that. <laughs> You can be honest with it, me. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I guess it's flattery, but... Uh, they say I, that. I, I think that just yeah, makes you feel better. Yeah, that's just trying to make you feel better, though. <laughs> but, yeah, but that's another one where, you know, when you look at, you know, which product you want to buy, you know, and especially in that, in that space, you know, you have to look at, okay, who's out there really in the dirt, using them, trying to understand them, understand what those products need to be. And, you know, I, you know, and that's what we try to do. Ready to push your Class B van to new extremes? Bring it to National Indoor RV Centers for expert upfitting. From expanded storage and larger fuel tanks to enhanced sleeping quarters and brilliant LED lighting. NIRVC will turn your ordinary Class B into the ultimate road warrior. Visit nirvc.com slash adventure vans today to schedule a free consultation. Tire blowouts can be catastrophic. That's why more and more RVers are installing Retroband, a revolutionary wheel enhancement specifically designed for RVs. Gone are the days of worrying about a blown tire putting you and your RV at risk. 
Retrovan looks almost like a donut that sits inside the tire. In the event that that tire bursts or loses a lot of air, the ring prevents the tire rim from making contact with the ground, allowing you to maintain control of the vehicle and get to a safe space. Learn more about getting peace of mind protection at Retroband.com. When it comes to RV living, there's no better place to go than National Indoor RV Centers. With six locations nationwide, NIRVC provides an all-around better experience for buying and selling luxury RVs, as well as service, storage, paint and body work, and more. Learn more about how NIRVC simplifies RV ownership at nirvc.com. So when the Revel, when that first concept, so did you guys come up with that concept? Did it come from Voice of the Customer or did someone bring it to you? And what was your initial thought when the Revel first was? A, was? Well, Mercedes had just brought the their four-wheel drive variant of the Sprinter into the States. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some different companies, including us, you know, would build you know our current product on it you know the era right four wheel drive it's a beautiful so, oh, beautiful coach yes beautiful coach um and you know, these, different these, concept the touring the yeah, luxury like yeah but but they were different concepts like you say and so you know we looked out you know tried to look out beyond the rv space you know into you know what people were doing with some of these custom vans and things and you know it was it was different mm -hmm. but you know and we took that through it was actually kind of a drawn out process you know we took it through um you know that mock-up and a concept how long phase. like time period what's an average time period from that the concept um, to a deliver i mean it probably changes per product but yeah it, average it changes you know it's it's a bit over a year okay you know so and that and that's why we try to not really look at, you know, what's the competition doing? You know, you guys you're always, don't you're always, do that. You're always going <laughs> to be behind when you're doing that. Right. So that's why we, you know, we try to um, try to pay more attention to, you know, what the cus customer. And so. Yeah. So where do you do you go to the, any of these shows or the international shows like the caravan salon show yeah. do you go there to get some ideas and see what's coming yes. from yep yeah we do and a lot of you know some of the ideas um, and suppliers we've used uh, have come out of that uh, not just myself but others from from Winnebago who have uh, made the trip over there but you know some of the big suppliers that like um, you know Techniform building their beautiful cabinetry beautiful doors, cabinets. you know that was brought in um, actually inspired for, from there from the well show. it was brought in for some Winnebago product that's an Italian company mm -hmm. and now they're just opening a facility in Elkhart <laughs> <laughs> oh really so, yeah. interesting yep so uh, but we do get a lot of ideas over there you know they tend to be it, it's an interesting show and in that in some ways they tend to be ahead of us mm -hmm. but then there's other areas where um, and particularly in some of the uh, the technology and energy technology where the U.S. has really kind of moved ahead of Europe. And so... So like in the, like the lithium battery yes. systems, that kind of thing? Yes. Solar, what about solar? How do we compare? Um, solar, solar, you know, it's pretty comparable. Mm -hmm. um, the, the lithium batteries are becoming more common over there, uh, whereas over here they're just, you know... Almost every model has an option, an option for, for it for lithium, or there's so many people who are ready to upfit for you. If you <laughs> um, but you know, we saw that you know the second alternators charging the the substantial, you know, five, ten, fifteen kilowatt hour systems. You know that that really started over here, mm -hmm. um, for the most part, as far as you know the the mainstream adoption of it. Yeah, but. You know, in terms of some of the styling and everything they do over there, of course, it's, you know, they're, they're beautiful. They are. They you know, are. And very lightweight and, and everything. It's a little bit more plain on the outside than they you are. see here, which I think is yes. interesting. It's 
that that hasn't transferred at all. You would think that it would work both ways, that you'd go grab some ideas from them and they would grab from us. But that is one thing that really hasn't. Yeah, and I, I think that's some of the taste. You know, we use a lot more paint over here, mm -hmm. um, which really, you know, holds up better than, you know, just some of the simple vinyl graphics, which, like you said, there, there was more of that over there. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, so that's kind of an interesting thing that it, that, that hasn't maybe crossed over a little bit more. But, you know, when we had the, when we had the Louisville show, which I miss Louisville. <laughs> <laughs> you want to bring that back? <laughs> well, I'm not going to say bring it back, but I, I, I do miss it. But, you know, you'd see some, some folks from Europe over at that. And then, you know, we see some familiar faces mm -hmm. over, over in Germany for the caravan salon. Yeah, very cool. So what do you have, um, what are you most excited for in your Class B 2024 lineup? Oh, what am I, yeah. well, there's a little something that's going to get revealed tomorrow. Well, remember, we're, we're this isn't going to air till after, so maybe you can share some of that with us and we we'll promise to keep it mum's the word until then. Okay, it, it's a new Solus. Okay. That's a new Solus pocket. So just, it's a little 17 foot, um, Van we call a 36B, uh, rear bathroom, mm -hmm. you know, similar to, yeah, okay, everyone does the rear bathroom across the, the back of a, a van. Uh, we clean sheet a design, but a complete new design on that. Oh, really? So Okay, um, that's exciting. Yeah, and then we've got some, uh, uh, a new sort of dinette sofa, kind of like similar to the signature pocket um, sofa dinette in the 36A. But this one has some new tricks up its sleeve. Oh, I'm excited. You kind of came to life a little bit when I started talking about that. <laughs> I, I like I like those little vans. I get excited about them. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I love designing them. I love using them. What, love talking which, about them. Which one do you use? Or which have you used the most? Ooh, the most. Mm -hmm. Or your favorite. Mm. Just say oh, your favorite. favorite. I know oh, you're boy. supposed to like them all, but what's your favorite? Yeah, well, well, let's see. Which one of my kids do I want to choose here? Uh, <laughs> exactly. You know, uh, if I'm going to go out by myself, I like that little Solus Pocket 36A, and I like the Revel. Okay. Um, if I'm going to go out with my wife, then the Travato 59K starts uh, climbing up that list there okay. fast. A little bit. A few more creature comforts in the in the Travato. Yeah, some more creature comforts, uh, a little more space for two people. Mm -hmm. You know, the bed arrangement, you know, was really designed for, you know, it was designed for two, a couple without, right. without compromises. Right, right. You know, so, and that's been another layout that you see all over now. <laughs> that's what I said. So, I know. It's, it's, it's a tough one. Yeah. Take it as a compliment, though, because you guys are, <laughs> a, you're, you are, you know, industry leaders as far as that goes. Yeah. Um, always impressive. So... Um, I know that you say that you work on things a year ahead of time, so Me I know too. that you can't <laughs> share too much, but some exciting things in the works. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's all we get? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Darn it. I was afraid of that. <laughs> um, well, at National Indoor RV Centers, okay. we are all about the RV revolution in that we um, are always working hard to improve the industry, mm -hmm. advance the industry, and and not say, you know, this is the way we, we've done it because we've done it this way for years. How can we do it differently? What are you doing in your area at Winnebago to advance that RV revolution? So I'd say um, there's a few areas. Uh, you know, we, we've worked on, you know, cold weather usage. Mm -hmm. You know, when you look at, you know, all the, the sports and things that people can enjoy in the winter time. There's so many. And if you look at the, the usage of our campgrounds right now, you know, go to a choice campground and try to find a spot in the middle of summer, you know, difficult. It, right. I mean, you go on your reserve and out of you know, 50 <laughs> sites, maybe there's three left open right. or it's sold out. And they're not the best sites. <laughs> no, They're no. there for a reason. No. So, you know, people are pushing, you know, especially as we're getting in some of the smaller rigs, they're pushing out, you know, in the, starting earlier, camping later. More of an all-season coach. Getting more, you know, into the, 
into the uh, yeah the all seasons you know in four or twelve months of the year, but that you know that has some different needs um, in terms of how the coach is designed, how it's built, and you know so that's one area. The technology, you know, when we, you know, you're seeing we just um, built the uh, the ERV two prototype fleet. Right. Yes, I've actually got to drive that. Yeah. That was nice. You know, and the, the systems and everything in that. You know, we weren't starting from scratch or from, you know, from ground zero. We had already learned, you know, some of this electrification through, uh, you know, the Travato, the Volta system and the, the Bolt, um, Echo even, you know, so we already had a big jump into, you know, what it takes to camp all electric. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that that's another area. And then I'd say that the you know the rugged space as you've seen you know revel of course to begin with followed with echo yeah follow with uh this collaboration we did with adventure wagon you know we're there when we're you know we're right lots we're, of we're options there yeah we're working hard to be authentic in that space which is very important so any any anything new coming up in that rugged space Probably. <laughs> Gosh, I'm asking the wrong guy the questions there. But, but I'm at least sorry. I know, I know. Well, there's, I know with Winnebago, there's always something new coming. Yes. All right. So you've mentioned a couple of times your electric V van. Mm -hmm. So tell me more about that, how that came, how that's coming to market. What are some of the obstacles? What are some of the requirements? Um, lots to talk about there, I'm guessing. Oh, yes. So <laughs> we're, we're very much in the early phases of. Um, the electric chassis uh, for our RVs, but they're coming. You know, if you read the headlines and everything, it, it, it's coming. Right. You know, when you hear about commercial vehicles, you know, semis, I think in California, they're all supposed to be electric by 2035, which is not that far away. No, I mean, we know how quickly a year goes. It just, it will be here before we know it. Yeah. But that trickles down through the rest of the uh, commercial vehicles and everything. And you've seen, you know, vehicles out there, like of course the e-transit and uh, there's an e-sprinter in Europe. But for the widespread adoption, and this is beyond, this is all far bigger than just Winnebag or even the RV industry. Um, the infrastructure is gonna have to come to us. You know, so we've seen that as far as the, the mainstream adoption. There will be early adopters, you know, they're interested in it much mm -hmm. sooner. You know, there's some folks who bought the Tesla Roadster, you know, even though there was not a lot of infrastructure and everything there. Right. So, you know, it, that'll be your where your first seat is that in, you know, the enthusiast market uh, where, where people want an electric RV, you know, and they're making a statement. Right. You know, they want to be first, first to mark, first, first in. Yep, they want to be first, first in. First adopters. What is that? There's early, early adopters. Early adopters. There yes. we go. Thank you, Chris. Yes. <laughs> you know, but um, but there's other parts of the infrastructure. You know, today if you look at all of the charging stations, they were designed for a vehicle about the size of a car mm -hmm. or an SUV. Okay. A lot of RVs are much larger than that. Right, and how? And you're going to probably need them more frequently, depending on. Right. But you got to fit in that parking spot. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that's even a challenge for uh, a towable behind, say, uh, this new Tesla Cybertruck or mm -hmm. uh, F-150 Lightning, you know, to come in there because they really aren't designed for a vehicle with a trailer. Right. So that's part of the infrastructure that's going to need to adjust. Um, and and this, these things will happen. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a matter of when. And... Um, it's a great thing, you know, that all these companies are now starting to standardize on Tesla's NACS connector because that opens up the charging network that much greater. You know, and I'm kind of agnostic if it of what connector they choose, just choose the same one. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Make it easy. Yeah. So, you know, that'll happen. Um, as far as the, the living side, I think, you know, I, I think we're pretty close to ready um, as far as how, you know, the with the 
appliances and the technologies available, I'd say we're closer to being ready on the living side than we are on the infrastructure side. Okay. Very interesting. So, so they've got a little catching up to do to get you to get where you need to be to support the vehicle. Right. Right. So the ERV2 program kind of built off of the original ERV program, which was, um, yeah, it was really an experiment to learn. You know, we built uh, that electric van. Well, the RV2 is a step closer to, okay, what is this really going to be like? You know, mm -hmm. if we're going to build something to sell, you know, because there's things that they could do on the ERV, the original one that we couldn't do in a, in a, in a e-transit because uh, the first one was actually built on a, a van that we had converted. But it's, we've got a fleet, about a dozen coaches that we've been putting out there. And to, again, here's this, this kind of recurring theme here. We mm -hmm. actually got it into the hands of some, some real owners or uh, prospective uh, owners, influencers to get feedback and learn. And how long, how long so far has it been in those, uh, about, those people's? About six use. months now. Okay. You know, and it's been, you know, folks might take it for a week, maybe two weeks. Um, you know, and then we. Any full timers? Learning. Any full timers in a in an electric van? Uh, not living in it full time, but we've had people with full timer experience use it. Okay, so, so very knowledgeable in the yeah. B van area, yeah. and then can give you some really good feedback. Yeah, and we had people with a lot of experience with electric cars, um, and then some who were completely new to it. You know, that that's a whole nother area of of learning to navigate plan find the charging stations but i think those challenges as time goes on and the infrastructure comes to us th those challenges are going to kind of filter away mm -hmm. no that's interesting well it's um interesting how long that that process takes and then what kind of feedback and then do you, have you had to make a lot of changes from the feedback that you've received from the from the users um It hasn't been huge, you know. I mean, I'd be lying if I said that it wasn't some things that we're, we're adjusting well, sure. and changing. But, you know, as far as the, the layout of the van and everything, you know, and again, it wasn't our, our first uh, our first time designing a, a camper van. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, um, you know, that for the most part seemed to be pretty solid, you know. So it was a few usability and functionality things we need to do. So we can look forward to that maybe hitting the market, but what would be your, what's your goal? That I can't really, I can't really say right now. Um, the, the range of the, of the van is just barely yeah. over a hundred miles. Okay. You know, and that's really not enough for us to go to market with, mm -hmm. you know, even for early adopters, you know, it's, it's something where, you know, you just get, close to maybe 200 miles and some early adopters are getting interested. Mm -hmm. But of course your mainstream is going to be, you know, upwards of, you know, that 300 mile range. Right. Oh, well, okay. So at least we know what you're working towards and we're getting yeah. closer. We're getting closer. Well, we're certainly getting closer. Um, and it's going to be, it, it, it's really it probably of the 30 years that I've almost 30 <laughs> that, that I've been in the, in the RV industry, and I don't know how long you've been in in this industry, but I think this is about a third of the time you've been in it. <laughs> which is still, which is still, I mean, uh, that's not touch. It's, it's still uh, significant, but I think this is probably the most interesting time uh, since, really, since RVs got started mm -hmm. to be in the industry. Biggest change. Yeah, it is our our time of biggest change. You know, between the 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 downsizing, the you know, the consumers, you know, a lot of the consumers have changed. Mm -hmm. You know, with their interests and you know, their expectations are you know they're they're very very high. Now. <laughs> they're very they're very automotively high, and they want it yes. simple and yeah 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 and you know some reliable mm -hmm. and that's uh, you know that is uh, that's driving the industry. I think it's. It's making us all improve, uh, do a better job, 
you know, even everything from, you know, the manufacturing to the marketing and the dealership experience even. Right. And even that the end user, you know, how easy is it for them to use once yeah. you pack all that into that great product? Now yes. I've got to be able to use it and understand it. So yes, absolutely. a lot of, a lot of things <laughs> that you're involved in. Well, that's very, very cool. Thank you. Well, Chris, I cannot thank you enough for breaking away and giving us this time today and letting us learn more about that product management and getting, you know, from start to finish a little bit on the B-Van side. So thank you. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. If you would like to learn more about the topics that we discussed today in the podcast, make sure you click the links below in the podcast episode description. Also, if you've enjoyed it, make sure you help us out. Share it with a friend, give us a good review, and of course, always subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Make sure you tune into our next episode to see which industry expert, icon, or influencer is up next. Until then, class is dismissed, and we'll see you down the road. Thank you.